Hey there, everybody in the FFBE Global Facebook group, and hello to everybody who sees this video on YouTube as well. Welcome to this week's episode of Ask an Old Mog, where we take questions from the Facebook group and try to answer them in a visual way. That helps people kind of learn about like things you can do in the game, mechanics, tips, tricks, that kind of thing, to learn to play the game you want to play, uh, the way you want to play it, um, and try and get some things done um, in kind of an efficient way. And today's question um, did not specifically come from um, the Facebook group proper, um, but it did come from a member of the Facebook group who messaged me um, directly um, and had a question for me that we've kind of been talking a little bit about. And I thought it'd be easier to talk about it, uh, you know, in, in a video like this rather than just like, you know, chatting back and forth. So uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive straight into that question. So I'm not going to call anybody out by names, but you know who you are. If you ever see this video, I'm going to, I'm going to send it to you as well. Um, here was the, the kind of general gist of the question um, that they were asking. Um, I need to get caught up on the story. Um, what units can help that go faster? Um, specifically, they were asking about units that can help like by like quickly just killing a wave of enemies before you even have to take an action. So like it'll save time. You can just kind of like speed through the story really fast. Um, to get all the lapis and stuff. I think they were trying to save up and, and get a bunch of lapis for like um, a, a current banner that's going on that's kind of expensive. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Um, and so here's my answer that I have uh, to that question. To address your question for the group as a whole, um, I first wanna talk about why it's important to do the story in the first place. Um, I have said in previous videos, um, that it's really important for new players to grind out the story. Um, yes, it's important to do time-limited events. In fact, I just said to somebody earlier, do time-limited events, get all the stuff from the like the Final Fantasy XI raid summon or the, like, the, the ticket summon thing, get all that stuff, and then go do the story if you've got nothing better to do. Um, you know, get, get all the rewards you can. They're time-limited, they're good rewards, they're good upgrade materials, go get it, and then go get the story. Here's why. Um, by progressing in the story, you get access to Lapis, you get access to new espers, cities where you can buy and purchase gear, obtain star quartz and like just like free stuff in chests, um, unlock some quests. And some quest rewards are definitely better than others, but like some of them are really long reaching um, and have some really good stuff in them. Um, in particular, like the Madam's Manor quest, um, the, um, the various key quests for the different regions, lots of stuff you can get in those. Um, the various chocobo shops, there are some nice, you know, single copy unique rewards you can get out of the chocobo shops for our Star Quartz exchange. So there is, but you do have to get to where they are in the story to get there. And you know, depending on what season you're talking about, there are even some free units and upgrade materials for those free units, um, items and gear. For those units, which is really cool, um, or in the case of Neo Vision's Rain, who everybody gets for free by doing the um, the, the newbie panel quest, there are upgrade like um, fragments that you can get for Rain just from doing season four of the story. So th there's lots of stuff you can do by progressing in the story, and it's very very valuable to do it. That said. Seasons one through three can take a really long time to complete the missions to get all of the lapis. And so like, for example, you get a hundred lapis for completing an entire stage or whatever, um, like a, a, a chapter of stages or whatever. Um, but like every individual stage has four missions to it. And some of them are really complicated or time consuming or differ from one to the next in season one through three. Some of them even require specific units to complete. Um, but there are a couple of things that you can do to try and speed this up and go quickly. I'm going to talk about a little bit about what that is now. Um, so uh, if you do power through them very quickly, um, it could cost you some lapis. And if like, let's say if you skip like 20 or 40 lapis on each one and you do like 200 levels, for example, that's going to add up. It's a lot of lapis that you're missing out on. And then you would have to go back and do it. Um, I'm going to make some suggestions now that can help you be really efficient and handle multiple types of challenges at once by putting together a nice team that you can just like set up a queue up a set of actions and then just hit repeat as opposed to just like automatically um, um, just killing things on, 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 on just like the auto auto attack wave stuff. Um, but you can also um, use the, the repeat function, the automatic repeat function that's built into the game. I have made a video about that as well. I think I'll, I'll go ahead and link a tag to that in, in this video here right now at about five minutes. Great. Um, so here are some suggestions that I have for you. Um, early mission requirements in seasons one, th one through three include things um, that are like this. Use a limit burst. 
Um, the good news is that a lot of units, once you get them to EX2, or if they're even 7-star, start with a Limit Burst. Um, available on turn 1 right now. So that's way, way easy. Um, another one is that's really common and really annoying is Summon an Esper. Well, the good news is lots of Neovisions summoners, um, like Neovisions Terra, Neovisions Luna Freya, Neovisions Ferris, all start with a full Esper gauge. So you can cast an Esper that doesn't do any damage, like Golem or Carbuncle um, or Lakshmi, um, that will not kill the enemies and will allow you to rack up an Esper, an Esper cast every turn. Uh, pretty cool. Um, another one is like that's like use use black, white, or green magic, and and you know but depending on which espers you're running or what units you're bringing, we have so many options for casting magic. It's not even funny. So like that shouldn't be an issue. Those three things with modern units should not be difficult. But the next one is kind of annoying. Um, many early quests involve using certain elements or multiple elements elements in the fight. So it'll be things like hit the enemy two times with fire damage or do fire and ice damage in the same round, um, things like that. Um, there are some ways you can do that by casting magic or using abilities, um, but there are also multi-element weapons that you can get to help with that. So like, for example, you could use um, the poppy paintbrush, which is every element except for dark, and then let them dual wield and wear, wear that and a dark weapon. And now you're hitting every element no matter what, and you're good to go. That's going to that's going to like knock out that challenge every time. Um, and then finally, there are some units that have gear and abilities that allow them to start the fight with an attack or that finishes the turn automatically or their basic attack is upgraded to do AOE damage. And depending on how well you can gear your units, um, that can clear most waves of like easy story enemies. Um, you could even theoretically, if you wanted to give one of those units um, a form of Berserk through the, like the Avenger dagger or, you know, you shouldn't do this, but Ifrit can learn the Berserk node that automatically starts you in Berserk state. Um, and that would allow units that do that to just automatically attack um, without you having to push anything. Um, and that will, you know, take care of that for you. Um, so I, I do think that that last one is not the best choice, but I do want to show you some examples of some units that do have some of those abilities um, or items or gear and, and give you some examples of that. So let's go into my units here. And I've got this like squad of units um, set up. So Zizat here. Um, Zizat is interesting. Um, if you look at him, he has a, a thing in his trust ability. If he's wearing, um, or not his trust ability, sorry. It is uh, right here, Zizat of Ice. It's a trait that he has, um, and it upgrades his normal attack um, to either just do damage and break uh, magic and spirit. Sorry. Uh, it's going to do one of these. We, let's go, wear off, or come back, come on. And they just do different levels of damage. There's not, it's not tons and tons of damage, but it's free damage. He just, if you, if you have him berserk, he's going to start the fight hitting all enemies with that um, and that's kind of a, like an easy entry point for that you know give him a lot of good gear for spirit and it's gonna just he's gonna automatically hit especially if you give him the berserk dagger you have to let him equip short swords for that um, but that's an easy materia to pick up from Pinello um, and then he could auto attack with his AoE skill um, another example is youth from Rabinaster Vaughn um, if you go into his specials um, he has this one here low town bread toughness okay this one does a lot more damage this one does 150x modifier to all enemies and it steals um from enemies so um that's pretty cool as well as doing a def defense spirit attack and magic break um on all enemies so if you give him berserk he's gonna start the fight just by stealing from all enemies and doing tons of damage and a break so it's it's a nice little auto attack that you could give to him we'll talk more about why stealing is important in just a second um, let's look at another one. Um, Corral. Um, this is another one that was recommended by somebody in my Twitch stream when we were talking about this. Um, he ha uh, Corral has this one, Bond with Nereen. It just does, you know, slightly more damage um, than one of Zizat's abilities. Zizat's is technically a little bit better, but it's bolting strike, chaining all enemies. Um, as opposed to one big hit, it's just like a chain of hits. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, non-elemental, so you can give, uh, Noreen's a good example of someone to give the poppy paint, poppy paintbrush to do that. You have to give equip staff. So like you go like this, you say, um, equip staff, right? And then you do poppy's passionate paintbrush. 
which has all elements except for dark. And then we give a form of dual wield. Right, you can do this in a number of different ways. And then in the offhand, you put something that happens to be dark elemental. Like her own STMR. Oh, it's two-handed. That's not going to work. Silly me. Look at me looking silly. So we do that. And then in this hand, we do something dark element. Like the Unholy Grimoire, if you have it. Um, or if you have, like, you know, you want to equip an axe, you just do equip axe. You give her whatever material that she needs. So we'll do, we'll do that. That's a, something you can get from a three-star unit. There we go. And now this Demon Axe is Dark Element, and she's now hitting with all elements two times. So this is a really good combination for the like use multiple elements so like if it's like fire and ice well good news the paintbrush does fire and ice um you know demon axe does dark so you're technically hitting all elements two times as, as as she starts the fight just click the auto attack and boom she's good to go cool unileska so unileska is a good example of a unit that just like with the auto attack um does do a fair amount of damage um it's right here Attack Unileska changes the effect of her attack to attack Unileska. Um, and it's, you know, 40x magic, 40x spirit. Um, it's evocation damage. Um, and it also strengthens her evocation damage and boosts her evocation damage. So, like, it, it's, it's, a, it's a nice, very easy, just, like, spam attack. Now, she's another one who starts with her limit burst on turn one. So, like, she has a warring spirit, I believe. I think they might call it something else. Uh, yeah, she's got Warring Spirit, so she starts with her own LB, and her LB is actually pretty powerful. Um, it's Mega Death, which has a chance to just kill enemies and also just does, you know, a bunch of damage. So um, it's pretty nice, and she'll start with it at level, you know, on turn one if you if you level her up to have her full LB. Um, once you get her as an NBA, she has Warring Spirit, so she can do that. Last one I want to point out is Tyvus. So Tyvus has, you know, see, he's a he's a premium unit, he's a Neo Visions unit, but he's got this thing. Um, Tyvus Gauntlet. This gauntlet he can wear, okay? And it has an ability on it called I'm Crazy Strong, you know. And it starts the build it starts the fight with I'm Crazy Strong, which is an attack that's stronger than Z's at. Um, but combined with with uh, with his own just like really high stats, Tyvus can clear most waves of enemies using this. Now, if you don't have Tyvus, but you happen to have Tulian, Tulian's another season four character who has a similar item um, that gives him an ability that does the same thing basically. Um, and in fact, if you have Tyvus and Tulian in the same party, um, they they queue their attacks at the same time, and it chains together nicely and does a little extra damage. Um, and that will definitely clear wave, most waves of enemies very, very quickly. But in doing so, you might miss out on some of those bonus missions. So it's it's good to try and do, you know, have an evoker, have someone who can cast black or white magic, have somebody who can, you know, just use an ability. Um, we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, and, and just, you know, queue up a set of actions and then just hit repeat and use the repeat feature to redo those actions every time. And you'll see why that matters in just a moment. So... Um, hopefully that gives you a sense of like how you could quickly put a, a team together that's going to hit help you hit all those challenge missions as well as move forward in the story very quickly. Um, but something you should definitely pay attention to, and this is something that's kind of hidden and embedded in the game's uh, menus, and a lot of players don't know about this or don't see it until it becomes important. Um, so I'm going to go into the menus here. I'm going to click on this button that says Trophies. So the trophies are all different quests that you can do for different things. So for example, this one here, Soldier of Fortune. Um, the more gil you earn, eventually you can get to a point where you earn this much gil and you get 500 lapis for it. It's 500, but it's still 500, right? Or Forger of Bonds, get this by having friend points. Um, Awakening, you do this for Awakening 60 units. That's like super easy. Just do, you know, 60 unit awakenings. Um, there's all these different quests, but this one here under quest uh, is kind of important. So for example, there's one here called Supreme Evoker. Um, for summoning 10,000 espers, you can get 500 lapis. So if you've got somebody who's filling the esper gauge every turn and using an esper every fight, eventually you will work up the ability to have 500 lapis in your hand just for playing the missions. 
Same thing for magic. Um, 10,000 magic spells, 500 lapis. Um, 10,000 uh, abilities used, 5, 000, or 500 lapis. Limit breaks. And then the one that gets really annoying sometimes is Legendary Thief. Um, stealing a thousand times it gets you 500 lapis. But if you don't have a steel unit, someone who has steel, it's kind of hard to do that. But you know who does? I just mentioned um, Youth of Rabinaster Vaughn steals automatically when he does his auto attack. So if you give Vaughn a Berserk weapon, he's going to steal automatically just for being in the team. He's going to help you get that 500 lapis very quickly. Um, but there's even one that I have not done. I have not done the items just because who uses items? Like nobody ever uses items. Um, it's expensive. It's time consuming, whatever. I just haven't done it, you know, but you know, you could even work items into your routine as long as you're replenishing your items and help you get that lapis. Um, there's lots of different ones here. I've never done the Coliseum ones, for example. I've done all the arena ones and so on and so forth. It just, it just takes time. Um, so there you go. Uh, by, by gearing your party right and setting your party up right to have an evoker, a mage, somebody who's doing an ability, um, somebody who's stealing, you can start, you can gather up some lapis that way too. So don't forget about the trophies. They are there and it's free lapis, you know, go ahead and get it. All that said, you know, I, I hope that that's helpful for you and is able to help you think about ways that you can clear the story quickly um, to help you get the lapis that you want, but also getting access to espers, different locations you can go visit, um, you know, different shops for like unique things you can get from the chocobos um, and lots of other good stuff that's available in the story. Not to mention just seeing the story. Some parts of the story are more interesting than others. Um, you know, I'm not a huge season three fan, but I'm a huge season two fan. I'm a huge season four fan. Um, so lots of good stuff you can pick up there. Season four in particular is home to, you know, best free unit in the game, Runda, and lots of free equipment that you can get for units like Leftia and Jave and Tyvis and Tulian. Um, so definitely go get those um, because free stuff is free stuff and it's honestly best in slot for them. So if you can get it, why not? And yeah, go do the story. Not to mention your free unit, uh, Neovision's Reign, um, can be fully upgraded to EX3 using just stuff that you get in season four of the game. So it's pretty cool. Um, you know, he's not the best unit in the game, but he's definitely a very usable, um, user-friendly unit for a beginner player to have. Um, he will clear everything from season one and two without any issues by himself, probably. Um, so yeah, definitely pick him up and, and, and use him. It's worth running through season four with a, with a strong friend unit to get some stuff to power him up, like the Obsidian Bracer, for example. Um, that way, he could do some really good stuff for you as you go back and play through one and two. But, you know, if nothing else, you got to get the espers. The, somebody I was talking to today was mentioning how the only esper they have is, um, you know, Ifrit and Siren and like Ramu. And it's like, you're missing out, dude. <laughs> you're missing out on Bahamut. You're missing out on Ashura. You're missing out on Odin. You're missing out on uh, Kokryu. You know, there, there, there are so many good espers that, you, that you're just missing out on. Um, by not playing the story, not to mention all the lapis and everything else that you can get. So cool. Hopefully that helps. And you are now ready to go get yourself some, some stuff done in the story very quickly, but don't forget about those trophies because it's free lapis and we like free lapis. If you've got a question that you want to see in next week's video, please let me know in the comments for free to message me in the Facebook group. You know, we're using the community chat thing now really popularly. Um, and uh, I'm really active there. So if you've got a question, you want to jump in there and let me know. Um, I'll be happy to take, take your questions and uh, do some good work with you, um, try and help you figure this game out, because I was thinking about it. It can be a really complicated game sometimes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm doing this. I hope you're glad too, and we'll see you in next week's video, whatever that's going to be about. Um, until then, be good to each other, take care, and uh, go get some story done.